So not only are there just video, image, and audio layers in After Effects, we can add these other types of layers called solids, adjustment layers, text layers. There's a few other ones, and so that's what we'll cover right now. So I'm just going to create a new composition here. I'll call this main. And if we want to add a new layer to our composition, we can either go to Layer and New, or we can right click in our timeline and go to new and pick from our layer. So the most basic one we can start off with is a solid. So when we click on solid, they'll open this new dialog. And essentially all a solid is, is just a solid color you can choose from. And just, you can set the dimensions of it and that's it. So this is useful for like, if you want to really quickly create a layer, then mask it. If you want to add like a generative effect to this, something like a fractal noise. So let's go to noise, fractal noise. And you can see that's just a really quick way to get an effect like that on our layer. This can also be used for particle simulations. So let's say particle world see that adds that so you can probably imagine solid layers have a lot of uses and you'll definitely be coming back to them again and again another type of layer we have is a null object all this is is just like an empty layer that's positioned at the center of our comp and so like this isn't rendered out or anything when you render your composition but you can add anything you want to this so like After Effects has these built-in effects called the controls. So if we search control, you'll see these expression controls. So we can add like a slider. And expressions is something I'll cover more in depth later. But you could like use a slider control, which just gives you a float value you can change. And you can connect that to other parameters and use this as the driver for all those other parameters. So that's one useful thing for a null object is you can just apply all these controls to one layer and not have them lost within your other layers. Null objects are also useful for when you're parenting layers. There's plenty of our uses for nulls and not everyone may have a use for them, but they're definitely really handy, especially when you start getting into expressions. So moving on to our next layer type is the adjustment layer. And I'm gonna create a new composition from a video here so I can better explain what that does. So adding an adjustment layer. So what an adjustment layer basically does is it looks at all the layers below it. And any effect you apply to the adjustment layer will apply to every single layer below the adjustment layer in a way where it treats it as it's like one layer. So what do I mean by that? So let's say we scale this down drag it over here, we duplicate it, we move that here. And on our adjustment layer, let's say we add a drop shadow. What that's gonna do, you'll see we applied the drop shadow to our adjustment layer. And when we adjust the parameters, you'll see it's applied to all the layers below it. But it treats it as if everything below it is just one thing. It's like if you took a screenshot and then applied an effect to that screenshot. That's essentially what the adjustment layer is doing. It's just built inside so you like don't have to create a screenshot or something. So like if I like overlaid these layers, you'll see that drop shadow is like treated as one thing. Where if if I took that drop shadow off the adjustment layer and applied it to these individually, you'll see that drop shadow is like it's also taken into account the scale of the layer, but now it's overlaid onto the layer below it where as if you'll see here this is overlaid but when it's back on the adjustment layer it's treating that all as one layer so that was a little drawn out explanation but hopefully that makes sense as to what an adjustment layer does and also as a side note you'll see on the adjustment layer here it has this adjustment layer switch enabled and so really what an adjustment layer is is it's a solid with that switch enabled so if i just created a solid and enable that switch and then applied the drop shadow effect to it it does the same exact thing so that's all an adjustment layer is it's really just a solid with that switch enabled all right so one last thing about adjustment layers uh, we're going to create a solid here 
and then we're gonna mask this solid to something like this circle. Then we're gonna pre-compose this with move all attributes. And really quickly, we're gonna show the transparency grid here by clicking on this icon and hiding our other two layers. So you'll see that layer is now just this red circle and then everything else is transparent. And so what an adjustment layer does with transparency is it will not affect the layers below. It will only affect the areas where it is not transparent. So if we did something like adding a transform effect and enabling the adjustment layer switch on this layer, the red circle, and then scale it up, you'll see that adjustment is then only applied to where the red circle is. And this can be used in a lot of different ways. So you could have like this pre-comp with this layer in here. You could have like this layer animated and I'll use that as a, an adjustment layer here. And so like that just opens so many possibilities of what you can do there. Like you can get a lot of different abstract looking things and it's just a really useful way of going beyond just a solid adjustment layer. So I think that's it for adjustment layers. So there's definitely a lot of options you have with those and what you can do with them. Moving on, the next layer type I'll talk about is text layers. And when you add a text layer for the first time, it should open this character and paragraph panel. If for some reason it doesn't, you can just go to the window and enable these right here, character and paragraph. And so text layers and later as we'll see shape layers have their own sort of little world to them where there's tons of different properties you can modify on these but I'll just explain some of the basic ones. So when you create a text layer you can just immediately start typing into it. And while your text layer is selected you can for example change the font of it here in the character panel. And also you have the option to change the fill color of it, the stroke color of it, or you can even remove the stroke. All these other options for it, you can change the text size. You can also just scale up the text layer to change it. So there's a lot of different options you have and you can play around with these. One unique thing about text layers is if we go into the layer for them down here in the timeline, You'll see on the right here, there's this animate drop down. And so text layers have their own animation tools that you can take advantage of. We are given the ability to individually for each character or word or sentence to be able to manipulate all these properties for them. So for a very basic example, we'll just add the scale property We'll change this scale value to like 50%. And right away you'll see that these characters were scaled individually, but more than that, we can change the range that it affects of them. So if we change like the start range, you can see that that's like an easy way we could scale up these characters individually. So like we can even set this to 0% and then we could change the start range. And so there you go. That's a easy way to animate those characters on. And of course scale is just one of the options. There's plenty of other options for this. If we click on the advanced tab, all these other options we have to mess with. If you want to learn more about text animators, I would recommend this really good tutorial made by School of Motion that explains like all the basic features of text animators and how you can understand them better and really start to make use of them. So I'll leave a link for that in the description if you want to check it out later. So the last type of layer I'll talk about is shape layers. And there's multiple ways you can create these. The first way is just by right clicking going the new shape layer. And that'll just create an empty shape layer. Or you can use the shape tool by hitting Q. They'll toggle through these different shapes you have up here which you can then change like the fill and stroke of these. And then while you have no layers selected in your timeline, you can just click and drag and that'll create a shape layer for you automatically. And like text layers, shape layers have all these different properties to them that you can modify and add to. So some of these we can see if we click on the add dropdown, 
it's split into four different categories. So we can add groups of shapes by using a group. There's four different types of shapes we can add. Rectangle, ellipse, polystar, which is just like a star or polygon you can add. Or you can add your own custom path. And then to these, we can add a fill stroke or a gradient variation of those. And then you have all these different modifiers you can add to them. So on their own, there really isn't much to talk about shape layers since it can be a really deep topic. And it's definitely something where you learn better by just using them and trying out different things with them. So as a quick example, let's just remove this shape layer and create one from scratch, which is usually how I like to create them. And we'll just add a polystar to this. We'll change the type of the polygon, add eight sides to it. Set this rotation to 22.5. Add a fill to that, add a stroke to it, increase the stroke, scale this up, and there you go. That's a really quick way to create a reference to one of the most overused sources in YTPMV history. So that's about all for the other types of layers in After Effects. There are other types such as light, camera, and these last three. Uh, the light and camera are only related to 3D layers, obviously, but these other types of layers aren't really Im that important right now. If you want to learn more about them, feel free to look them up on your own. But light and camera layers, if I ever do a tutorial later on 3D, these will definitely be important ones to learn about and how to use them properly. In the next tutorial, we'll really quickly cover what these switches do, and then we'll discuss rendering. And then finally, I'll show an example of my workflow for creating YTPMVs.